question is this. What does Sierra Ontario, what can Sierra Ontario learn from an almost two year old? So I went to visit my grandson in Vancouver a couple months ago. As I spent time with him, then and later, I began to think through what we could learn from him. So common phrases uh, when I was there were, Grandpa, toys, <laughs> which meant we had to go upstairs and play in toys with it in the toy room. Or, uh, Grandpa, ball. And we would have to play some kind of a ball game. He'd want to play uh, a ball game with me. So he's a child, and he just loves to play all day long. He never did get to work. But he was learning a ton about locomotive skills, about manipulative skills, uh, social interaction, and a whole lot more. And then he would hide his face. He'd put his hand in front. And go, Grandpa, oh, where's Caleb? Where's Caleb? And he'd go, boo. And he'd go again, Grandpa, Grandpa. I'd go, where's Caleb? Where's Caleb? He'd go, boo. And uh, so we keep doing that. And when he gets older, you'll learn that just because you cover your own eyes, you can't see anybody, people can still see you. And as a grown-up, I can just tell him he's being silly, because I can see him. But I'm not going to do that. And so I just play along at his level and learn what, he, and he'll learn later on uh, what other people can see. And that doesn't really work. I remember as a child, too, I remember a neighbor boy hiding behind one of those fences with the boards like this. And he was hiding behind it. His eyes were right at one of the boards. He was playing hide and seek, but you could see the rest of his body, or half of his body. Uh, and he couldn't believe it that you could see him. <laughs> but anyways, um, we flew back to Hamilton. And a couple of days later, we're on the phone with our daughter. And I'm getting emotional here. But I won't. <laughs> she says the first day, Caleb was walking around the house and, Grandpa, where are you? Grandpa, where are you? And truth be told, we missed each other. And we missed that time to play together. And then he got on the phone. And so once in a while, I get a phone call from him. He's just two years. He just turned two. And it's, hi. <laughs> hi. And we're, oh, that's Caleb. And, oh, Caleb, how are you doing? What are you doing? Ball. Okay, he's so the ball. And then he'll go into his big story about what he's doing. We have no idea what he's talking about. And... We just agree and laugh when he's laughing and just enjoy his, uh, his, his, uh, yeah, his useful heart. And then one day, I think a little bit of the prompting by his mother or daughter, at the end of the phone call, he goes, Grandpa, Nana, I love you. And I was kind of like, oh, I was just kind of like, oh, man. So I, I never forget that. But then I began rethinking about the importance of play in the lives of children. And before they school age, they eat, they sleep, and they play. And then they come to school, and we put them in chairs, desks, rows, regiments. And the opportunity to be playful and in rurals and recess can be such a critically important part of their play experience. The games might not always make sense. The games might always be designed to fulfill government expectations. But they need to be played at their level. And they'll learn to move and to manipulate and to socialize and so much more through them. And then there are schools that have locked gym doors at recess or offer no student leadership for active recess. And children wander around as my grandson did and call out to their teachers, where are you? Where are you? I want to play with you. And the play is not just any old play or a bad play, but it's a play that brings people together. Intramurals and recess ought to be a place where people feel loved. So it's neat to honor people who try to make that kind of difference in the lives of children. And that's why Sierra Ontario gives a few awards each year.